What is up guys, Rick Kakis here, and today we're taking a look at the new exotic pulse rifle added into Destiny with the release of the Rise of Iron expansion, the Outbreak Prime versus the King's Fall Raid. Now I'm mainly doing this out of the sake of curiosity and fun. However, it is pretty interesting that because of Destiny's leveling system, you don't really get any sort of advantage when you're over leveled compared to an enemy. The advantages kind of stop when you reach the same light level as the enemy you're fighting. So if Bungie ever decides to raise the light level of King's Fall and make it relevant again, the performance of the Outbreak Prime is actually going to be pretty similar to what it is in today's video. And what we're going to do in today's video is we're going to be looking at the Outbreak Prime in several different ways. Firstly, from a purely damage output standpoint, we're going to be looking at how much damage it does per shot, per nanite swarm, its overall damage per magazine, and we're going to be doing that for all of the major encounters throughout King's Fall, but also we're going to be taking on all of those encounters with all six fire team members using the Outbreak Prime to really see how good this weapon is. And guys, we have some very interesting results. So without further ado, let's get started. Now the reason we're testing out the Outbreak Prime and the reason it's good against bosses is because of the Corruption Spreads perk. This makes it so that after repeated hits on the same target, Nanite Swarms will appear and damage that same target or other very close by targets and do just extra damage when compared to any traditional Pulse Rifle used in the same way. The Corruption Spreads also makes this weapon do bonus damage against Fallen, which of course doesn't come up in the King's Fall Raid. Now the Nanite Swarms seem to activate on every 4th burst, which means because of the magazine size of 36, you will get 3 Swarm activations if you are consistently shooting and not missing a single target. We actually did find out, and I didn't even know this, but if you shoot the target too slowly to try to guarantee your shots, you won't activate these swarms. You have to be firing at pretty much the highest rate of fire. The plan going into this was very simple. Simply look at the headshot damage, multiply that by 36 because you have 36 rounds to the head, and then simply die after one magazine, look at the overall damage you've caused, and then simply subtract the headshot damage, and what you have left is the nanite swarm damage. Divide that by how much damage each particular nanite swarm actually does, and you get how many nanite swarms the Outbreak Prime generates. Now I could just throw a total damage dealt number at you guys, but I would assume you'd like to know where this damage is actually coming from. And with the Outbreak Prime, similar to the Galahorn, the damage numbers are actually a lot more complicated than I thought they'd be. Now I thought that when you shoot an enemy in the head with the Outbreak Prime, it would just do a certain amount of damage, and it would do that same damage for all of the different rounds in the magazine, right? I mean, that makes sense. But as you can see here, that isn't the case. In this screenshot, you can see four distinct numbers popping up. 1092 at the top, 1638 below it, 1101 below that, and to the left, 142. Now the 142, that is the damage per Nanite Swarm. But the other three different numbers are all different numbers for getting a headshot with this weapon. So, what the heck is going on here? Well, the difference between 1101 and 1092 is very slight. I think that the reason for this is simply the range of this weapon. The War Priest must be at basically the range drop off for this gun, so as he tilts his head back and forth, that slight difference in range is also causing a very slight difference in damage as the range is sloping downwards. Now the 1638 is a lot more difficult to explain, in fact it's basically unexplainable by anything like range. It turns out that every fourth burst, kind of, you just get a random damage bonus with this weapon. 
You just somehow, some of the rounds in that fourth burst will do extra damage. Now here's the interesting part. For the fourth burst of the Outbreak Prime, I got two 1638 damage numbers pop up. But for the eighth burst, for the next time I got four times in a row, only one popped up. And for the last time when I emptied my magazine, none popped up. So only three different times did the 1638 number pop up. So very weird stuff going on here. So I guess there's randomly more damage every four shot. You get two, one, and then none of those extra damaging bullets. Again, <laughs> total weirdness going on here, but those are the damage numbers. And we took these damage numbers and compared it for the overall damage when I died and came up with these results. So of the 36 round magazine, 33 rounds are just doing normal headshot damage. We took the average to make up for the slight range variation, and then three are doing those extra damaging shots. You take that total, minus it from the overall total, which was 4,731, and you get the nanite damage. So 5,932.5 damage is attributed to just the nanites. You simply divide that by 142, which is what each nanite does, and you get, actually almost perfectly, you get 42 nanites. The actual number was 41.7, but we just rounded up, and 42 divided by 3, which is nanites are going to trigger 3 times, is perfectly 14 nanites per swarm. Now we are not going into this much detail and doing this much math for the other encounters, but this shows you exactly where the damage numbers are coming from. I actually did another round, died again, and looked at the damage of a full magazine, and it was only 200 damage off from the initial number, so almost identical, which means these numbers are extremely consistent. That difference can be accounted for missing a headshot, and that's really all. So that is really going in depth into where these damage numbers are coming from and it results in a total of 47,000 damage per magazine of the Outbreak Prime. Now how good is that? How good does the Outbreak Prime perform against the War Priest? Well again, all six of my fire team members put on Outbreak Primes and we took on this bastard and it absolutely shredded him. I was amazed to see how much damage six primary weapons could do. If you go back and watch, we did the Galahorn versus the War Priest, we got pretty much the same damage as the Galahorn against the War Priest with just the Outbreak Primes. It is putting forth an absolutely absurd amount of damage. I was incredibly impressed. Now, it didn't kill the War Priest in a single round. That is probably still accomplishable with something like the Black Spindle. If all of your fire team members had Black Spindles, I'm sure you would beat the War Priest in a single round. But for a primary, nearly killing him in one round was very, very impressive. So against the War Priest, considering you're using a primary weapon, which is also very effective against normal adds, I'd give this, frankly, a 9 out of 10. Almost perfect. Now let's move on to the next encounter, Golgoroth. How does the Outbreak Prime perform here? Well, firstly, against adds, it's excellent as it was before, and funny enough, you actually do activate the nanite swarms against the orbs that you want to drop, so they actually go down pretty quickly when you're using the Outbreak Prime. So obviously, 10 out of 10 for this encounter, just because of that. But in any event, going against Golgroth, we have some very interesting results. So you are going to be doing 6,332 damage for a normal shot against his crit, and that's without a tether. You're going to be doing, for the high damaging shots, 9,468, and that's times 3. Now we then get on to the nanite swarms, and this is where things get a little complicated. Just like when testing the Galahorn, the damage of the nanite swarms varies drastically depending on where they actually hit gold because the swarms can actually hit his crit and do a lot of damage, actually 456, or they can just hit outside on his body and not activate that crit and only do 152 damage. 
Now the amount of nanite swarms that hit his crit and hit his body are going to vary every time. So the total damage per magazine of the Outbreak Prime is going to be between 256,248 or 243,000 480. The true number is gonna lie in between these two numbers. Now that number sounds like a lot, right? 250,000 damage for a magazine, but with all of us shooting Golgoroth with the Outbreak Prime, you can see that when we jump out, he actually doesn't take that much damage. I've done a lot more damage than that. That's not like a terrible amount of damage, but again, I've done a lot more, especially with sniper rifles. And you're gonna see the second round, we actually give up on using the Outbreak Primes, try using normal weapons. I have the Raid Sniper, the X uh, Machina with me, and I do a lot more damage. We do a lot bigger of a chunk of damage out of Golgoroth. Goldross health is a little weird. With a sniper, you gotta remember you're doing like 120,000 per shot. And with the entire magazine, you're doing 250,000. So per shot with a sniper, especially if you're using something like the X Machina, which actually can have four rounds in a magazine, you are going to drastically outpace the Outbreak Prime. So that number looks very large, but actually compared to other weapons, it isn't as large as you'd think. So in total, for this encounter, the Outbreak Prime versus Goldroth, I'd have to say around a 6 out of 10. Great against the ads, actually surprisingly good against popping bubbles, but most importantly, it just gets outpaced by regular sniper rifles, so you're still going to want to stick to those when you're damaging Golgroth. And actually, the raid machine gun, because it's so easy to hit Golgroth's crit, is kind of no joke as well. You may want to take that for a spin in this encounter. Alright, now moving on, we have the Daughters. Now when we tested the Galahorn, I was absolutely blown away with how much damage it did to the Daughters. Will the Outbreak Prime do as well? Well, unfortunately for me, on the other end of this with the calculator beside me, there was a lot of weirdness yet again with this encounter in terms of the damage numbers. You can see when I start to damage her and when someone shoots the tether, and don't worry I've accounted for all of the extra tether uh, damage just taking it away in the calculations, but you can see a bunch of different numbers appear for the nanite swarms. Sometimes it's 227, other times it's 452, 410, 475, like there is a bunch of completely different numbers appearing for these nanite swarms. Now the actual damage per shot is pretty consistent. 2,635 damage for a normal headshot, 4,002 damage for the high damaging headshot. Now using some math wizardry, I have taken away again the damage benefits from the tether, averaged out the discrepancies in the numbers that are appearing for the nanite swarms, and the total for a magazine of the Outbreak Prime is dealing 109,650 damage. This number was calculated using headshot damage, and of course you're not going to get only headshots, especially on the daughters that are waving their arms around like they're doing the YMCA, but in reality you're actually going to make up for this in the kind of, again, weirdness of the SIVA Nanite Swarms. They just do more damage every once in a while, so again, this should give you a good representation of how much the Outbreak Prime does, but it won't be a definite answer. And actually, the Outbreak Prime, as you can see, with all of us using it, melts the daughters pretty damn quickly. Nowhere near as close to the Galahorn, I would say, but quick enough that I would definitely recommend using it. The Outbreak Prime gets the benefit of still being able to do that extra damage with the Nanite Swarms without having to worry about getting purely headshots. That's what makes using sniper rifles in this encounter actually not that good. You're hard pressed to get headshots with your screen shaking from all the enemies shooting at you and with the arms again waving in the way and all of that stuff, whereas the Outbreak Prime doesn't rely on that so much for its damage output. So Outbreak Prime versus the Daughter's Encounter, I would actually say it's an 8 out of 10. It's pretty damn solid against the Daughter's. And moving on, we have the last encounter against Big Daddy Oryx. 
Now, first things first, against the adds, of course, it's great. Against the ogres, it's surprisingly effective. Like, you melt ogres just using the Outbreak Prime. And now we move on against actual damage to Oryx himself. And I have to say, Bungie developers, how the fuck have you programmed this game? Because, guys, just watch this clip. Watch the damage numbers that pop up when I'm shooting Oryx in the chest. It's just... A random mishmash of all these different numbers. I've got right here 561, 568, 832, 616, 842, and 760. All of those numbers appeared when shooting Oryx in the chest. And yes, some of them maybe can be attributed to range when he leans back the 561 and 568 damage numbers. But what is 760 doing in there? What is 616 doing in there? That makes no sense. It makes no sense at all. In any event, you're going to be doing like an average of 650 damage per shot when shooting Oryx in the chest, which is pretty much online with other primaries out there. Now, what do the Siva Nanites do to Oryx? Well, 99% of the time they are immune. You'll see immune pop up a lot. I had teammates actually say like outright that they saw smaller damage numbers in the 100s appear when shooting Oryx. So it is possible apparently for those Siva Nanite Swarms to make their way and hit his crit, but it's very, very unlikely. You don't want to count on those. However, it does continue from there because we did get a very, I guess, interesting result when testing out the Outbreak Prime. And I'm going to fast forward here to the last damage phase of Oryx. So this is all six of us using the Outbreak Prime. This is the last time we have to stagger Oryx and then we're going to go and do the 16 orb strat. And you can see him opening up for the slam and uh, wait a minute, wait a minute. He, he stopped opening. He's, he's frozen. Oh, no, he slammed. And we're dead. And um, that is the downside of using six Outbreak Primes. You actually glitch Oryx. There's actually so much going on in terms of the swarms that Oryx actually glitches up and that can happen to you. And you may be thinking, well, maybe that was lag. Maybe that wasn't the Siva swarms. He just kind of lagged out a bit. And that's what we kind of thought as well. But we ran it again. Of course, we had to beat the raid. And we tried again using these six Outbreak Primes, and uh, this time it was uh, much more obvious to what is going on. Oryx himself glitched out of nowhere, and you can see how many Siva Swarms were there in the area. And he moves over to the right and is inside the wall. He's inside the wall, that's how bad he's glitched up. So, using six Outbreak Primes on Oryx. Bad idea, <laughs> 0 out of 10. Using a few, maybe you know 1, 2, or 3, that's fine. But don't use all 6 when shooting Oryx. Warning to all of you out there because it can, as you can see, glitch him up entirely. And moving on, the last thing to account for in the Oryx encounter is the Shade of Oryx. And thank goodness there was some consistency here. Headshots do 1,265 damage. The extra damaging shots do 1,898 damage. And the Nanites do a flat 154 damage. Easy calculation there. You are doing 53,907 damage. Almost 54,000 for a magazine of Outbreak Prime. Against the Shade, this weapon was actually fantastic. Lowered her health very, very fast. Very easy to get consistent damage. Again, she's moving around, teleporting, charging at you with a sword. So even if you're not landing your headshots, you're still getting that nanite damage to keep your DPS high. So, how does the Outbreak Prime perform in the Oryx encounter overall? Well, I'd say, not accounting for the whole glitching situation, so again, don't use it with six people, but overall I'd say, honestly, it would be about an 8 out of 10. Fantastic in this encounter, melts the ogres, great against adds, great against the shade, and pretty darn good against Oryx himself, just shooting him in the chest. 
A snipe rifle may be favorable in a lot of these encounters and I ran out of ammo from an outbreak so I was switching to the raid sniper every once in a while and it did a crap ton against oryx and melted ogres super fast and all that stuff. But of course, the consistency of having a primary weapon that does all of this stuff very well is just fantastic. So overall, the Outbreak Prime versus the entire King's Fall raid, I'd have to say that it lies at an 8 out of 10. It absolutely cuts through bosses with the one exception being Golgroth, and even there it's not that bad. Its performance against adds is consistently fantastic, and again, it's a primary. You won't be having the same ammo constraints as you will when you're relying on the Black Spindle in the Special Slot or the Galahorn, for example, in the Heavy Slot. Now guys, that's gonna wrap up today's video. I hope you enjoyed and found this informative. Now if you did, please remember to help me out by simply rating and especially sharing this video. If you want to see more Destiny content similar to this, don't be afraid to slap that subscribe button. Now if you want to get in touch with me and keep up to date with the latest channel activity, the best way is to follow me on Twitter, that's linked in the description down below, as is my Twitch channel which you can also follow. Again, I hope you enjoyed the video and as always, have a good day.